Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. We've got some birthdays this month, and today we're celebrating one of our mods, Captain Blitz's special day, with a special request. An archetype that defies expectation, spitting in the face of established design to create a truly unique experience. It's like Dark Souls, right down to how it'll punch you in the face if you don't play it right. Today's episode is brought to you by my lovely patrons and the fine people over at Dragon Shield. If you want to protect your cards with the strongest scales on the market that even come with their own lore while supporting the channel, use my affiliate link in the description. Premiering in the August 2009 core set, Raging Battle, the iron core of Kawaki Maru was discovered by players, but also Kozaki and Magical Scientist out somewhere in the wide expanse of Dark World. That's right, Kozaki and Silva exist in the same world. How about you square that circle? The two scientists, plus one, would use this core to augment inert matter before finally fusing it with living creatures to create an army of powerful, if unstable, creatures. And today, it's my pleasure to show you how all these catastrophic chimera work. We'll study the core to see what it's made of, discover its effects on the local flora and fauna, then see what other test subjects we can wrangle in. It's time to get cooking with Kawaki Maru. So, what's the deal with Kawaki Maru? Well, they span a wide range of types and attributes, but they have two important characteristics. One, many of them have effects that are meant to combat light and dark monsters. And two, have a maintenance cost that will destroy that monster during your end phase unless you reveal a kind of card specific to that monster from your hand, or send a copy of Iron Core of Kawaki Maru from your hand to the grave. And while this is a more subjective definition for what makes up this theme, their monsters tend to have a much higher base stat line and more powerful effects than other monsters of their level to make up for that drawback. Uh, at the time they were printed, that is. Uh, we can't really account for, uh, what, 14 years of power creep? Oh, and one last little tidbit of information for anyone wondering. The name Kawaki Maru isn't based on anything in particular, but it is a rather Englishified version of the OCG name Core Chimail, combining Core, Chimera, and Male, like armor. That all really confused me growing up, but the more I say it now, the more it kind of makes sense. Like, Kawaki Maru, Kora Kaimeru, Kor Kaimeo. That's pretty neat. I love learning new stuff. Okay, uh, I'm done geeking out over all the details. Uh, for now. Normally, this is where we'd start talking about the main deck monsters, but since we have a key spell card that shows up on basically every card in the theme, I think it would behoove us to get familiar with it. Iron Core of Kawaki Maru is a normal spell card, and during your draw phase, if this card is in your grave, you can add this card to your hand instead of drawing, and or send a Kawaki Maru monster from your hand to the grave to add this card to your hand. Yeah, it's a spell card that doesn't actually have an activated effect that you can use. It's literally just here to keep Keep your monsters from exploding. And by giving up your draw phase, you can maintain one of them per turn, since each Kawaki Maru is going to need a separate instance of this card to keep it safe, which is why revealing a card in hand is usually the optimal choice. Though I do like that this card gives you the option to trade out one of your on theme monsters from your hand instead of skipping the draw, which can be useful for certain interactions, but is otherwise just a huge pain that you have to run, because so many other effects require you to have this in hand, which is partially why you'll find so many members of the archetype get splashed into other themes that can pay the maintenance cost. You don't have to play a huge brick, and you still get all the powerful benefits. But if you do play this purit, you're gonna need this spell, because it's core to your strategy, whether you like it or not. Okay, now it's time to get into those monsters. Kawaki Maru Speeder is a level 3 wind machine monster with 1200 attack and 2200 defense, requiring a machine monster to be revealed for its maintenance cost. And if you draw an iron core of Kawaki Maru during your draw phase, you can reveal it to your opponent to draw one more card. Now, it might seem a little overkill to play a card like this just to bypass a top decked brick, but we actually have a few monsters whose effects require you to place an iron core on top of your deck. So this actually lets you use those effects without sealing your draw. So if you want to maintain a consistent flow of cards, you'll have a need for speed. Er. 
Kawaki Maru Doom is a level 3 Wind Fiend monster with 1700 attack and 900 defense, requiring a Fiend monster to be revealed for its maintenance cost. And while on the field, the effects of light and dark monsters that activate during the main phase are negated. And the best part is, it doesn't check for any zones. Banished, in hand, in the grave, any light or dark activated effects will not be tolerated during the main phases. And while this means quick effects have some wiggle room, this does just shut down any traditional on normal summon effect. Whenever you see Doom, know that this is specifically the demon that was sent from hell to keep normal summon Alistair from having another word tacked on at the end. And because they just keep printing powerful light and dark monsters, let's just say that this card is almost as tenacious at supporting the player base as Doom's modding community is to theirs. Kawaki Maru Hydro Barrier is a level 3 water aqua monster with a thousand attack and 1900 defense that does not have a maintenance cost. However, it can return an iron core of Kawaki Maru from your hand to the top of your deck, and if you do, the effects of all face-up effect monsters are negated until the standby phase of your next turn, except Kawaki Maru monsters. Now, pay attention here, because this has some really neat wording. It doesn't negate the effects of monsters currently on the field, just ones that are face-up on the field when they resolve, which means that any monster summoned after the effect is activated will also have their effects negated. And because this is an activated effect, this lingering pseudo floodgate will stay active even if they destroy Hydro Barrier. So if your opponent's deck is highly monster effect focused, especially if they're on the field, you're in a great position to keep them from Hydro pumping out value. Kawaki Maru Tornado is a level 4 Wind Winged Beast monster with 1500 attack and 1200 defense that doesn't have a maintenance cost. It can return an Iron Core of Kawaki Maru from your hand to the top of your deck to destroy all special summoned monsters your opponent controls. And that's not once per turn, for what it's worth. This can be a pretty nice board wipe considering most decks just love special summoning. And Tornado won't leave you high and dry since it doesn't have a maintenance cost. It'll just blow you around and ruin all your property, which is is almost as bad as losing a single Kawaki Maru. Kawaki Maru Beetle is a level 4 Earth Insect Monster with 1900 attack and 1500 defense, requiring an insect monster be revealed for its maintenance cost. And if a light or dark monster is special summoned in attack position, it's changed to defense position. Though unlike monsters like Baguska, this is an activated effect, so there is room to respond. And because of how Link monsters work, this effect became a little less useful when those rolled out. Still. Turning off the combat capabilities of most light or dark monsters for a turn, not to mention making them potentially more vulnerable to attacks, isn't all bad. It's just no longer in a position where it can beetle out the competition. Kwaki Maru Gravarose is a level 4 fire plant monster with 1900 attack and 1300 defense, requiring a plant monster be revealed for this card's maintenance cost. And during each of your standby phases, you can send a level 3 or lower monster from your deck to the grave. Strangely enough, this is not archetype locked, so you could run this in almost anything that likes sending low leveled monsters to the grave, though having to wait until your standby phase will probably be a bit too slow. But, I mean, what'd you expect? You dragged Rosemon from a whole other property! You think they're gonna make for a good Yu-Gi-Oh card right off the bat? That's kinda harsh. Kawaki Maru Ice <laughs> is a level 4 water aqua monster with 1900 attack and 1200 defense, requiring a continuous spell card be revealed for its maintenance cost. And eyes can send a card from your hand to the grave to destroy a special summoned monster on the field. And that's about once per turn, so the more cards you can deploy, the more monsters you can destroy. And since there's no requirement on what kinds of cards you can discard, this can work in basically any deck. Though, keep your head on straight, remember that it sends to the grave, it doesn't discard. So unfortunately, you have not not found your new danger tech pick. It's also probably the least splashable of the Kawakis, despite its lax effect, cost, and restriction. Most decks that run continuous spell cards are gonna actually be playing them instead of keeping them in the hand. So sadly, any ice that hits the field will melt pretty quickly. Kawaki Maru Sea Panther is a level 4 water sea serpent monster with 1900 attack and 1200 defense, requiring a water monster be revealed for its maintenance cost. And once per turn, you can send an iron core of Kawaki Maru from your hand to the grave to return a spell card from your grave to the top of your deck. This is an odd way to recycle your spells, effectively giving up core now for the spell next turn, unless you have another draw effect, or something like Archfiend's Oath or the True Name that cares about the top card of your deck. 
deck. Heck, at the very least, Archfiend's Oath is a continuous spell card for ice that you won't mind keeping in your hand until you've got the right setup. But because these are very minor edge cases, I can't see anyone playing this card seriously. But don't let Sea Panther's poor performance negatively color your opinion on the shape of water monsters. Kwakimaru Urnite is a level 4 Earth Beast Warrior monster with 2000 attack and 1500 defense, requiring you to reveal a Beast Warrior monster from your hand for its maintenance cost. And once per turn, you can reveal an Iron Core of Kwakimaru in your hand to special summon a level 4 or lower Kwakimaru monster from your deck, except a copy of itself. Now, this is one of our best monsters, essentially acting as a toolbox for any effect we want. We can lock out light and dark special summons, lock out their effects, or be ready to negate that pesky Nibiru you're sure your opponent has in their hand. And it's got 2,000 attack to boot. Watch out, folks. We've got another hot Yu-Gi-Oh! Centaur on our hands. Arrrr. Kwakimaru Crusader is a level 4 Earth Beast Warrior monster with 1900 attack and 1300 defense, requiring you to reveal a Beast Warrior monster from your hand for its maintenance cost. And if this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can add a Kwakimaru card from your grave to your hand. Yeah, recycle any on-theme card by bowling over an opponent's monster, which can be invaluable. It basically puts Iron Cores back into your hand to spend on keeping your units alive without having to give up any of your resources. And with 1900 attack, it can run over quite a few monsters, and find a way to give it extra attacks and it can get even more cards back. But I've gotta ask, why does the Skull-Headed Knight count as a Beast Warrior? The armor does look kind of Roman, is it trying to cosplay as a gladiator beast? Kawakimaru War Arms is a level 4 Earth Warrior monster with 1400 attack and 1200 defense, requiring a warrior monster be revealed for its maintenance cost. Once per turn, you can target a level 3 or lower warrior monster in your grave and equip it to this card. And War Arms gains attack equal to half the combined attack of monsters equipped to it by this effect. And if this card would be destroyed by battle, you destroy all monsters equipped to this card by its effect instead. Now, this one you have to play outside the archetype, as we have no level 3 or lower warrior Kwakimaru monsters. If you want to get the most attack out of this, you could play this in Flower Cardians. Because if you absorb either Crane or Cherry Blossom with Curtain, you can gain a whopping thousand attack. Though this also has a fun amount of utility in Goki, as you can equip most of the level 3 or lower ones to proc their search effect when they go to the grave. Twist Cobra even puts it at 2200 attack. But a how in the world is this Bear Knight a warrior and Crusader a beast warrior? Was there a mix-up at the card text factory? I want answers! Kwakimaru Burgzak is a level 4 Earth Warrior monster with 2000 attack and 200 defense that requires a warrior monster be revealed for its maintenance cost. And if this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, it can attack once again in a row. And that second attack can even be direct, so you can potentially swing in for massive damage with just one card. But that's about it. Burgzak doesn't really contribute anything to the archetype, and is just a big normal summonable beater that fits more into a warrior deck than its own team. Heck, uh, putting a Gallatin on this thing in Noble Knights is devastating. You might think that feels a little ostracizing, but they're a guy with two knives. I'm sure they're fine. I gotta tell you, this is pretty terrific. <laughs> yeah! Kwakimaru Drago is a level 4 wind dragon monster with 1900 attack and 1600 defense, requiring a dragon monster be revealed for its maintenance cost. And while on the field, neither player can special summon light or dark monsters. Now, this is a monster that stood the test of time. With light and dark being some of the most widely used attributes in the game, plopping this onto the field before your opponent can set up a board is a stupendous floodgate against a lot of decks. And with dragons being so popular, there are a lot of decks you can splash this this into. Or you could say there's a lot of decks it could drag go into. Kawakimaru Power Hand is a level 4 Earth Machine monster with 2100 attack and 1600 defense, requiring you to reveal a normal trap card from your hand for its maintenance cost. And if this card battles a light or dark monster, any of that monster's effects that activate or apply on the field are negated during that battle phase, while this card remains face up on the field. This is our strongest normal summon in the deck, but is also the most strange. Like with Ice, if we're playing normal trap cards, they aren't doing us much help in the hand. So, naturally, we're gonna set them to the field. Even the kinds that can activate from the hand, like Infinite Impermanence or Evenly Matched, require you to have no cards on field to activate from the hand, so controlling a monster 
kind of defeats the purpose. The effect is also pretty mid. While it is able to take down a gigantic sprite, even while its attack is doubled, that's also about all the utility it provides. Though there may be light or dark monsters in the future that this can be applied against fruitfully. Until then, it'll serve us faithfully as our trusty Drill Warrior. Uh, but not that Drill Warrior. Okay, these next four I feel like I have to talk about all at once because they're basically the same card. Kwakimaru Guardian, Wall, Sandman, and Overload are all level 4 Earth Rock monsters with 1900 attack and 1200 defense, requiring a rock monster be revealed for their maintenance cost. And if your opponent activates a particular kind of card, you can tribute this monster to negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it, with each monster handling a different card type. Guardian negates monster effects, Wall negates special summons, and Sandman negates trap cards. Overload is a little different, instead negating inherent summons. Now, if you've played against Ad Emancipator, you're no doubt familiar with how powerful these can be, especially Guardian. Just tip this one over on your excavates and you've stopped Nibiru or any other kind of powerful, monster-based interaction. While in Sand Manor, no slouches either, and with how powerful spells and traps have become, these have actually stood the test of time fairly well. And just about everyone with an extra deck is inherently summoning at some point. The problem comes from using this in the theme, which has nowhere near the same kind of deployability as Ad Emancipator. In Kwaki Maru, these are usually trading your normal summon for a single negate, and that's generally not feasible. These are some strong additions to rock decks, but when running them pure, no amount of guarding or walling or going overboard is going to keep this from being a bit of a snooze fest. Kwakimaru Boulder is a level 4 earth rock monster with 1200 attack and 1000 defense that doesn't have a maintenance cost. When this card is destroyed by a battle and sent to the grave, you can add an iron core of Kwakimaru or a level 4 or lower Kwakimaru monster from your deck to your hand. This is a way to get that core into your hand, or else find another monster to help set up your board, as well as being a rock monster you can reveal to keep your negation bodies from self-destructing. But since the trigger effect only works when destroyed by battle, well, I don't spend too much time trying to make this work nowadays, otherwise you'll find yourself playing Sisyphus Turbo. Kawakimaru Prototype is a level 4 earth rock monster with 1800 attack and defense that does not have a maintenance cost. If any number of face up Kawakimaru monsters on the field would be destroyed during the end phase, you can destroy this card instead. And when any number of face up Kawakimaru monsters on the field are destroyed during the end phase, you can special summon a Kawakimaru token, which is a level 4 earth rock monster with 1800 attack and defense. So this gives you an interesting quandary. You can either have Prototype act as a substitute Iron Core, going to the graveyard instead of a monster that failed to pay its maintenance cost, or let that monster get destroyed and replace it with an 1818 token. Interesting, but not always useful. Since it doesn't trigger during any other phase, effect removal before then gives you no benefit. So for a majority of the game, this is going to be a vanilla through and through. But uh, that's the thing with Prototypes, right? Uh, they haven't really worked out all the kinks yet. If you want the final production model, we're gonna need Kawakimaru Supplier, a level 4 earth rock monster with 1400 attack and 1600 defense that doesn't require a maintenance cost. If a face up rock monster you control is sent to the grave except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand. And if this card is special summoned, you can add from your deck to your hand an iron core of Kawakimaru or a card that specifically lists iron core of Kawakimaru in its text except a copy of this card. Okay, if there was ever a card that was meant to be more Ad Emancipator support than Kwaki Maru, it's this one. And once they use their effect, this can sub in for them to grab you another card. However, its own summon effect could have been limited to just when Kwaki Maru monsters leave the field, not rocks in general. But, you know, that's just modern economics. Ad Emancipator's demanded support, and Kwaki Maru supplied. Kawaki Maru Galungalate is a level 5 earth zombie monster with 2500 attack and 1700 defense, requiring a zombie monster be revealed for its maintenance cost. And if a Kawaki Maru monster you control would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can remove a Kawaki Maru monster from your grave instead. Now, you might think that this solves a lot of issues. If you fail to pay the maintenance cost for your Kawaki Marus, you can just banish another out of your grave to effectively pay that cost, right? Well, here's the thing. Maintenance costs 
aren't effects. Thus, when they're being destroyed by them, effects that prevent effect destruction can't be applied. So we're basically looking at what a fixed prototype might have been. But even if it worked that way, there are still two big problems. One, it's level 5, which means it's a bit harder to get onto the field than our level 4s. And two, Kawaki Marus aren't exactly known for their ability to shunt a bunch of cards into the grave, so you'll find yourself running out of fuel for this rather quickly. Look, it's already burning through so much it's melting. Kawaki Maru Rook Lord is a level 7 Earth Warrior monster with 2800 attack and 2200 defense, and must reveal a warrior monster from hand for its maintenance cost. You can tribute this card by tributing a single Kawaki Maru monster, and when this card is normal summoned, you can remove from play, or banish, as the cool kids would call it, a Kawaki Maru card from your grave to destroy up to two cards your opponent controls. That's right, it's a main deck Geyseris. Oh boy, you can tell my frame of mind around when this card came out. And then, once you've gotten the pops, you basically get to keep a 2800 attack beater to smash face with those huge hammer arms. The drawback is that it is a vanilla after you summon it, so you don't get much value outside those stats. But if you crush your opponent after it's summoned, it won't really matter too much that it doesn't have another effect. Maybe they're saving all of those for Kawaki Maru Bishop Lord. Kawaki Maru Valifar is a level 8 fire fiend monster with 3000 attack and 2100 defense, and this card has a maintenance cost, but not one that lets you reveal a card. You have to send an iron core or lose it. You can also tribute summon this card with a single Kawaki Maru monster, and this card can't be destroyed by the effects of trap cards, so no trap hole shenanigans here, and it does piercing battle damage. As far as bosses go, this one's pretty underwhelming. The trap card protection is cool, but only protects against destruction. So even though this can save you against the added destruction effect granted by Labyrinth Labyrinth, their compulsory evacuation devices will still get you by sending this monster very Vala far away. Kawaki Maru Maximus is a level 8 wind dragon monster with 3000 attack and 2500 defense that can't be normal summoned or set, and can only be special summoned from the hand by banishing an iron core from your hand. Yowza! Its maintenance cost also doesn't allow you to reveal a card, but you can discard a Kawaki Maru monster instead of an iron core if you want, which you might have to do since you just banished one of your cores. Spoilers, we don't have an on-theme effect that gets those back from the banished zone. And once per turn during your main phase, you can select and destroy a card your opponent controls. Yeah, it's a free pop every turn on a gigantic body. You know, it's kind of funny seeing what needed a huge drawback to keep balanced back in the day. In the modern metagame, you can activate Destiny Fusion to make DPE and pop a card every turn without a maintenance cost, but back then, you had to banish one of your key cards and keep a discard on hand every turn, and you only got to pop at spell speed 1, and you were happy for the opportunity. So that being said, Kwaki Maru probably works better as a go-wide strategy rather than focusing its power behind one single monster. This dragon isn't terrible, but without any protection or easier summoning conditions, it's better off going to Dogmatica where Maximus belongs. Alright, that's all the monsters, now it's time for the spells and traps. First up is Core Compression, a normal spell card that has you revealing an iron core of Kwaki Maru from your hand and discarding a Kwaki Maru monster to draw two cards. This is our archetypal draw 2 spell, and it is the worst one I've ever seen. Technically, this is still a 2 for 2, so you're still gonna go even on card economy, but most of these cards also set up your engine, like Destiny Draw or Orchestrated Return. But not only do our monsters not really do much in the grave, you have to already have an Iron Core in hand. So it's a dead card, unless you have your other dead card in hand. This deck is in such dire need of starter cards, and this could have been its saving grace. But sadly, Core Compression isn't really competitive. Diamond Core of Kawaki Maru is a normal spell card that adds a Kawaki Maru card from your deck to your hand, except a copy of this card. And you can banish this card from your grave, and for the rest of the turn, Kawaki Maru monsters you control can't be destroyed. Yes, they did it! They printed a helpful piece of support! Diamond can either turn into an Iron Core, or if you have it already, can search any of your monsters or applicable support cards. And by banishing this from your grave, not only can you ensure destruction effects can't hurt you that turn, you don't even have to pay any of your maintenance costs. It wasn't able to elevate the theme to competitive levels of power, but it did raise its rank all the way up to Diamond. 
Iron Core Immediate Disposal is a normal spell card that sends a copy of Iron Core of Kawaki Maru from your deck to the grave. This way you can start using your draw phases to recycle the core, which is my favorite part of running bricks. Running more bricks to access your bricks sooner. So, uh... Yeah, I don't know about you, but I'm immediately disposing of this card anytime I see it. Kawaki Ring is a normal spell card that has you revealing an iron core of Kawaki Maru from your hand to select a face-up monster on the field and destroy that monster. And both players take a thousand damage. Ah, good, the next iteration of the Ring of Destruction. It's kind of nice to see a way to remove a problem monster and advance the game state all at the same time. And if you're ever at a point where your opponent is at a thousand life points and you have more, you can point this at your own monster to force the win if needed. So, if you like Kawaki Maru, you can literally put a ring on it. Urgent Synthesis is a normal spell card that returns an iron core of Kawaki Maru from your grave to the deck to special summon a level 4 or lower Kawaki Maru monster from your hand or grave. So this can be an easy summon of a powerful monster to get you back into the game, but the trade-off is that your iron core is no longer available to recycle with its own effect or crusaders. Like, I know it's just a saying, but haste is literally making waste here. Kawaki Maru Initialize is a quick play spell card that tributes a Kawaki Maru monster to add an iron core of Kawaki Maru from your deck or grave to your hand. This is basically a minus one, but can be used to keep up your resources in certain situations. The most obvious application is if your monster is about to self-destruct, you can cash it in for a core and use that one for later. But you can also use this if that Kawaki Maru would be destroyed or otherwise removed, or to dodge targeted negation. If your opponent chains Imperm or Veiler to your Urnite, this gets it out of the way to ensure the effect resolves. And then you have another core in hand for your troubles. So despite how bad it is for your card economy on the surface, it's got more utility than it may initially seem. Core Blaster is an equip spell card that only goes on a Kawaki Maru. If it battles a light or dark monster, destroy that monster without applying damage calculation. And when the equipped monster is removed from the field and this card is sent to the grave, you can return this card to the hand. So this boils down to letting any of your monsters win in a fight against a light or dark monster, and has the added benefit of recycling itself if the equipped monster leaves the field. However, it does miss timing, so you unfortunately aren't able to link, sync, or tribute the equipped monster to get this blaster back in your hand. Though, to be honest, I kinda wish more equip cards had the ability to recycle themselves like this. And I wish we'd gotten our hands on such sweet merch. I didn't know the Nintendo Super Scope came in this design. Iron Core Armor is an equip spell card that only goes on to Kawaki Maru monsters. During damage calculation only, monsters that battle with the equipped monster lose attack equal to the equipped monster's level times 100. And if the equipped monster would be destroyed during the end phase, you can send this card to the grave instead. So it's got a prototype-like effect, making this more pseudo-copies of Core. And that's about all it's good for, because that debuff is pretty lame. Our monsters are usually going to be level 4, and while their stats are already pretty good, good, a 400 point debuff is pretty underwhelming. You could put this on Maximus, which will help it clear some threats that are just over the 3000 point threshold, but that's about it. If this gave attack instead of debuffing opponents, the ability to close out games faster might have been a point in its favor, but as it is now, I can't really say I'm a fan with my whole chest. Core Transport Unit is a continuous spell card that, once per turn, lets you discard a card to add an Iron Core of Kawaki Maru from your deck to your hand. Yeah, it turns any card in your hand into an Iron Core, and you might even get some Grave Synergies to go along with it if you build your deck right. And no matter how many times you shuffle it back into your deck with cards like Urgent Synthesis, you can pull it right back out at an efficient price. And if you already have access to all the cores you need, then congrats, you can keep this in hand to pay for Ice's maintenance cost. But once again, it's a card that only accomplishes the task of getting a brick into your hand that doesn't otherwise do anything, no matter how nice the carrying case for it is. Core Overclock is a continuous spell card that gives all face-up Kawaki Maru monsters you control 500 attack. And once per turn during your main phase, you can discard an Iron Core of Kawaki Maru to have all face-up Kawaki Maru monsters you control gain 1000 attack until the end phase. This means you can get a total of 1500 attack on each of your on-theme monsters that you control, which can lead to some massive swings in damage. And even if you don't have a core to spend on this, a 500 point party-wide boost ain't 
nothing. Heck, our 1900s rocket up to monarch size for crying out loud. Most decks wish they had normal summons like ours. And these can all stack, nothing stopping you from controlling multiple overclocks. And while its additional boost is only once per turn, it's a soft once per turn, so the damage can get out of hand very quickly. But if you do that, please make sure you get a good coolant system or something before you do it. You can see Rook Lord's already getting pretty toasty, probably why overclocking isn't covered by the warranty. Iron Core Specimen Lab is a field spell card that has its own maintenance cost. Thankfully, it only requires you to reveal an Iron Core of Kawaki Maru, you don't have to discard it. But there is no alternative like uh, revealing another field spell, so that's something. And each time a Kawaki Maru monster on the field is destroyed during the end phase, its owner can add a Kawaki Maru monster from your deck to your hand. And yeah, you heard that right, uh, it's a reciprocal effect, so be wary of the Core Kaimail mirror. Like Prototype, this gives you a bit of a refund on a Kawaki Maru monster exploding, and honestly, these two work really well in tandem. If both effects apply, you get a replacement token with some decent stats and a fresh monster. But because it only triggers during the end phase, you won't get to take much advantage of those cards until it swings back around to your turn, if you have another turn. It's still a bit too clunky to recommend using it, and honestly, the less I see of this card, the better. Oh, look how cute Drago is before they get turned into a Kawaki. Uh, can we get a baby version of this, please? Automatic Laser is a normal trap card that you can activate when your opponent normal or special summons any number of monsters with a thousand or more attack by revealing an Iron Core of Kawaki Maru in your hand to destroy those summoned monsters. So on top of mimicking Ring of Destruction, we also have a trap hole. Well, at least it's better than original trap hole, working on special summoned monsters as well. Though, once again, I'd really rather just play Compulsory Evacuation Device. Unless you're going up against Pendulums, it's way more efficient. Also, why in the world did they strap lasers onto this thing? You're supposed to be using the core to augment other things. Reckoned Power is a normal trap card that has you revealing an Iron Core of Kawaki Maru from your hand to destroy all face down spell and trap cards your opponent controls. This can be kind of funny to flip on your opponent during their end phase to rob them of all of their chainable back row, but we have so many new ways of dealing with back row today, so I reckon this won't really measure up. Kawaki Maru Shield is a normal trap card that activates only when your opponent's monster declares an attack if you have two or more iron cores of Kawaki Maru in your grave to destroy all face-up attack position monsters your opponent controls. Again, we've got another reference, this time to the powerful Mirror Force, but um... <laughs> the activation conditions here are baffling. If it needed two or more Kwaki Maru monsters in Grave, I'd understand, but two cores? Buddy, I'm lucky enough to have one in my hand. This is a total wash, especially now that we live in a world where you can just play Mirror Force at three. Hmm, these archetype-specific retrains did not age well, huh? Core Blast is a continuous trap card with an effect that you can only activate if you control a face-up Kwaki Maru monster. Once per turn during your standby phase, if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can destroy a number of cards your opponent controls so that your opponent controls the same number of cards as you control monsters. Um, okay, uh, you might not believe me, but this is another reference, this time to the card Pineapple Blast. It's a bit of a retrain too though, because where Pineapple shrank an opponent's monster lineup to meet your own, Core Blast shrinks all cards your opponent controls to match your monster lineup, but the activation trigger of your opponent needing more monsters is still the same. It's an odd way to even things out, and needing to control a Kwaki Maru monster is potentially problematic when it comes to activating this effect consistently, but does have a potentially huge payoff. But I still couldn't really be bothered to use this card because of all the hangups, uh, all else being equal. Core Reinforcement is a continuous trap card that has you special summoning a Kawaki Maru monster from your grave in attack position. And when that monster is destroyed during your end phase, the controller of this card takes damage equal to that monster's attack. When this card is removed from the field, destroy that monster, and when that monster is destroyed, destroy this card. Wow, another retrain of a classic popular card. I think we might have stumbled upon a sub-theme where they plug the iron core into old cards rather than living creatures. Now, the damage can be a potentially huge problem, but I'd be remiss if I didn't point out a nifty combo. If you summon Valifar with this, and then reinforcement leaves the field, thus destroying the summoned monster, it won't destroy Valifar, because it can't be destroyed by the effects of trap cards, even your own. 
It's actually pretty similar to the Jinzo slash Call of the Haunted interaction, though it does work on a completely different axis. Okay, that's got to be a reference. Uh, does anyone have any info to reinforce that stance? Negaton Core Panel is a counter trap card that you can only activate when your opponent activates a monster effect while you control a face up Kawakimaru monster and have an Iron Core of Kawakimaru in your hand to negate that activation, and if you do, destroy it. Hey, we've got a Divine Wrath! Or a Solemn Strike, depending on your predilections. It's nice to have monster negates, but uh, once again, this card is just outrageous. It's not unheard of to have a core in grave and a monster on board, but it's just got so many different cogs that have to be in the right alignment that it's just frustrating. I guess we should also bring up Iron Core Luster, which is a counter trap card that negates an opponent's activated spell or trap card by revealing an Iron Core in your hand and destroying it. So you have coverage for all kinds of cards to negate, but unless you have two cores in rotation to keep one in grave and one in your hand, these cards are mutually exclusive. They don't actually complement each other. The cores either have to be in your hand or in your grave, which kind of sums up the theme of the whole archetype. Being freaking annoying! Alright, so that's all the Kwaki Maru cards, but what do we do with them? Well, first, you wait for a format where light or dark monsters are prevalent. But, you know, that's every other format, so you won't have to wait very long. Next, you just win. Just beat your opponent up before you even have to care about those many, many maintenance costs. Use your big attackers to close things out by going as wide as possible, then I guess go into some rank 4s to avoid your monsters exploding if you have to. So what can we play to help them out? Well, speaking of ending the game quickly, a uh, Utopia double. Urnite plus an Iron Core in hand does give you all the materials to make them, and really, what else are you playing in the extra deck? As mentioned previously, most Kwakis are better off in other decks with dedicated types as they can ensure their maintenance costs are paid without spending too many cards. But what if we had another archetype that also had a diverse spread of types that lined up particularly well with ours? Enter the Therians. The only ones that don't work here are Duke, since they're a Psychic, and also a Light, and Elasia, since we have no Reptiles. But that just means we're only stuck with the good ones. Oh no. Lily Boria can scoop up a Gravarose from the grave. Reaper Fum can scoop up either Hydro Barrier or Ice. Bull Ein has either War Arms or Bergzak. But most importantly, Regulus can scoop up Speeder or Power Hand, which in turn gives you a wide variety of utility. If you're playing pure Kawakis, Beast Warrior is one of your most important types, so playing some Fire Formation Tankies gives you more chances to get Urnite into your hand, as well as Crusader, not to mention getting a nifty little attack boost just in case. Summoner Monk is also kind of funny here. With the Recycling Spell card, Monk acts as another Urnite, since most of our good Kawakis are already level 4. Heck, if you have a spare spell and Iron Core in hand, you can pitch that random spell for Urnite, then reveal the core for Urnite Summon effect. As for a silly tech pick, you've gotta run DNA Transplant. Call light or dark, but probably light, on activation, and now you can force your opponent to fall under the effects of your stun capabilities. And bonus, the medical debt they'll be accruing is outrageous. And if we want to be extra evil, we can note down that it was an elective surgery. <laughs> And that's all I have to say about Kawaki Maru. I think that, much like the subjects in the lore, they were an interesting experiment to see how far they could push card design if you introduced severe drawbacks. But outside some very niche scenarios, we're not going to be seeing these cards make an impact on anything anytime soon. That being said, this is a prime opportunity to introduce a new series of cards in a core set to recontextualize them in the modern game. Then maybe we can find out who that blasted third scientist is! Come on! But now, I want to hear what you all have to say. Are Kawaki Maru the deck for you, or are they a tad too unstable? And which one's your favorite? Despite my grievances about them earlier, Valifar looks pretty rad. And while you're down there, subscribe to help us get to that Akiza Explorer 50k subscriber special and share this video with someone you know who loves Yu-Gi-Oh! It really does a lot to help me out. Today's episode was brought to you in part by Dragon Shield. When you want to protect your cards with the power of dragon scales, get some sweet lore for them, and support the channel, check out my link in the description to get started. This video was also brought to you by my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commander Green Knight, Nebula Navigator's Third Dynasty, Adam Zagdell, Andrew Newman, Avi Chali, 
Kane Senpai, Cameron Berg, Chibi Gohan, Colin Todd, Eric, Frankie, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh, Gloomba331, Great Big Pillock, Hairbear, Harry the Ominous Benefactor, Howling Zangetsu, Ironic, Iskander711, Jester Designs, John Manji, Jordan, Julius Sneezer, Mana Charge, Marluxia is a Girl, Meteornis, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, Rem T. Bright, RJ the Jank Monarch, Ruxith Sarani, Sammy Haim, Salen Lucius, Sophie, apparently, The Charizard Flame, The Fresh Prince of Conair, The Wizard Moose, and Xander Wolfensberger, Cosmic Crusaders, Ariel Kersey, Bear Shark to Post Studios, Chaz Ghost, Chris Kessler, Corbinisms, Danny Bound, Drakenwald, Emony, Eva Padilla, Gatorade, H2O, Gatorade, H2O, Johnny sucks, he really, really sucks, Haro, Herbal D, Jesus Garcia, Kale the Dragon, Carp, King Scarlet Yu-Gi-Oh, Lord whoop de doo Manga Pages, Marion James E. Picotta, Matt Simmons, Nitromo, Shooting Star 3300, Star Lord 777, Super Purd, the Legendary Raven and Tucker Ordorn, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. I'm only able to continue doing this thanks to the support of these lovely people. So if you'd like to help support the channel, get your name in these credits, and get my videos earlier than anyone else, make sure to check out my link down in the description for my Patreon to see if I have anything you'd like on offer. And if you'd like to see me talk about another deck that's got some interesting deck building restrictions, check out this video I made covering Nemorelia. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye